it's impossible to explain the the level of desperation that, that people felt. I mean, you just think that the first couple days when, when people were trying to hang on to the bottom of C-17s, that's desperation that Americans, like, Americans don't understand that level of desperation. It was a very clear mission, which was to go rescue Aziz. I knew that if I didn't personally intervene, Aziz would die. Chad and I connected, we had worked together over the last several years, and I just said, you know, how can I help? It's great we're gonna go help Aziz, but I'm talking to this orphanage over here that's 3,500 orphans. Let's not just help this limited group, let's help as many people as we can. I was either gonna be sitting on my couch, tweeting about how this is all up, or I was gonna be one of the 12 people that was making it a little less 24 hours later, tickets are booked. Then we're getting on a plane. I knew I would be more of an asset working with whoever's on the ground. The military was not allowed to go outside the wire. That was the rules of engagement. They can't go outside and help people. Americans, something could happen right in front of them. They can't go outside and help. The Taliban looked right at them. They just executed the woman on their hood just to try to elicit response. Just to be like, just so we're super clear about who is in charge here, I'm gonna murder this woman right in front of you and there's nothing that you can do about it. Their version of crowd control was when it got out of hand, they would just dump an AK mag into the crowd. Whoever just made the decision to turn his bus around essentially just killed, just murdered these people. But some of those people are Americans. There's not enough emotional capacity left in my soul to be able to mourn four busloads of people that are about to die. I'm trying to save a woman and her children, but off to like five feet away from me, is a, is a dead child. There was just everywhere.